I used to take him to the art gallery, into the museum on the weekends, just for an outing, just Jamie and I. Mm -hmm. The lady down there thought he'd be a very good artist, but I don't, I don't know whether he pursued that very much at that point in time. I actually wanted to be a police officer. I wrote a letter to the commissioner and it was like pretty flamboyant, so I probably wasn't on the right track, but I drew like, like all this police stuff around it. And he sent me information about how to be like a police officer. And clearly that hasn't worked out. I guess I was like the creative black sheep. Everyone did sports and golf and fishing and all that sort of stuff. And I was the one that wanted to like play with fabric and do creative things. I think I kind of just always wanted to be like not at school while I was there. And I remember doing like textiles for year 11 and 12. I always loved textiles, but I actually didn't know how you did it as a job. You know, like I didn't know that like, oh, that's like a job that you could do and make money off it. Um, well, I'll try to. Um, <laughs> well, I'm a dropout, so I dropped out like after a year and a half. Well, I remember like going like, okay. I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? I, um, a friend of mine at the time, Selena was, um, the editor of Attitude magazine. They were the sponsor for the Adelaide Fashion Festival. And I saw something online for it and I thought, oh, should I do it, should I not? And I put it on Twitter, I was like, should I enter it? And she wrote back in capitals, yes. And I thought, okay, I'll just give it a go. And it was like two weeks out before the entries closed. So I like quickly finished my collection. I was working like nine to five every day, coming home and working on this collection. But I was so exhausted. I remember I lost like five kilos and I had tonsillitis the, the week of the festival. Like I was so sick. But you just do it because you love it. I suppose it's all the, the time and the stress and the worry and the finances that go into it that sort of, you know, help create that, I suppose, and that they're the proud moments, aren't they? It was more just like support, I think, from the festival as well. And like, I guess, recognition, you know, you're the emerging designer for 2010. Um, and you know, I think being also like the first male to win it as well was also a pretty big thing for them as well. Um, but you know, that's now like six, seven years on from that. And the support's still there from the, the Adelaide Fashion Festival and the government. So it's still a continuous thing. It's not just like, okay, you win it, okay. And then they just leave you. It's been like a real constant support. Textiles is actually a huge, market you know in the economy um, and as well like not only myself but designers we're making things here in Adelaide which is great for the state um, so with that comes trade missions so um, they do trade missions all around the world um, and I got selected to go to the one to India last year with federal government I went to Jakarta to show at um, Indonesian Fashion Week so I was the only international designer showing at their like opening gala ball, which was one of the most incredibly over the top things I've ever seen. It was amazing. Um, didn't understand any words other than Australia and Jamie Sortino. Jamie's always sort of um, been in the, the fashion festival. But after when, when you compare that with Jakarta this year, like the Jakarta Fashion Festival, I think that was I could, I could cry when I think of the moment that I saw photos of Jamie in Jakarta. Jamie, it's interesting, gets a lot of his inspiration from nature, don't you? Mm. And just from like around the, the garden here, or, and I remember one, uh, one summer, um, one of our other boys came up with his girlfriend and they were going into Mount Lofty. So Jamie went with them and, and just that created you him to the flora, didn't it? So the la his latest collection that he's just finishing, yeah, the him to the flora. Well, this one's from my new collection. Well, the embroidery was all done in India, so it was actually all custom. Um, but it was all sketched out here. This one's pretty special just because of, I think, the story behind the embroidery. It's just essentially like prints of 
I don't know if you can see the print of the flower. So it was kind of like a bit of representation of like when a flower dries out the skeletal veins of a flower. But yeah, heading back to New York in November, so that'll be exciting. It definitely changed my mind on the collection because I kind of had something started before I went and then I came back and it just like changed my mind completely. It's a little bit bigger in like volume of what I've done before, so that's also takes a bit more time, but I'm kind of just in the planning stages. Like it sounds so like cliche, but it's like when you do go there, it is just like this city that is just so mesmerizing. And you know, I found like the State Library really beautiful. The Art Deco of that building is incredible, which kind of influenced my collection quite a bit with like, again, the 1950s and, you know, to sit in the State Library and, you know, where Audrey Hepburn studied or sat and you know to walk the streets where Grace Kelly walked that's pretty magical um, to think that you know people that you draw inspiration from have walked the same pavements that you have um, I'd love to tap into that a little bit more and see what else I can draw out so I just kind of took that risk and just booked the one way ticket of course I'm going to come back just for a little while we'll see what happens you know but I just think for now, like, I just need to go and spend some time there and really grow the business over there.